Okay, here we go in the final run, the home stretch, nearly there, fellas. Um, stick with it for about another five minutes. We're picking up the Vietnam War, we're gonna take it through to the end from 1969. Nixon's following his policy of Vietnamization. He's pulling troops out like crazy, uh, trying to get the American boys back home, but at the same time, he doesn't want to look weak. Always so concerned with his image, um, trying to pretend he's not a crook, that um, he increased the bombing of North Vietnam at the same time as pulling American troops out, try and get uh, the Americans a better deal at the peace table in terms of getting their POWs home and the like. And uh, he also, in 1970, at a time when he was supposed to be decreasing American commitment to the war, he invaded Cambodia. He widened the war, something Johnson would never do, and his generals moaned at him for not letting him do. Um, so they could try and take out um, the rebels or the, the communist guerrillas across the border and attack the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Uh, this led to massive protests in America, most famously, four dead in Ohio, Kent State University, famous Neil Young song where the National Guard fired on American students, killed four young Americans, um, and again, deepening that uh, divide in America and that anti-war movement, uh, it's a complete disaster for Nixon at that stage. Um, this is where you need to be able to explain and make sure you can do it. Why the Americans withdrew. Could easily get a 10 mark question on that, six mark question on that. What was the most important reason why they withdrew? Think about the fact that they're a democracy. Politicians should bow to public pressure. Also think about why it was difficult. I think that was a question in the mock exam why it was difficult to withdraw, why Nixon couldn't just pull out the troops straight away. They're good questions that you could get um, on any 4610. Nearly there now, but a lot to talk about in the early 70s. American troops are coming out, but the fighting's still going on. But in 71, worth pointing out, Lieutenant William Calley, the man in charge of the My Lai Massacre, he becomes the only American, the only US military personnel convicted um, plenty of uh, American troops carried out those murders, but the commanding officer at the time is the only one who's sent down for it. He's sent down for 20 years hard labour, sentenced in 1971. Um, of course, gets out about three years later in 1974. Doesn't really serve much of a punishment. Justice hasn't really been done. Just typifies uh, the sour feeling that many people have in their mouth about Vietnam when you look at an event like that. I've got nothing in particular for 72. And then we're nearly there, 1973. Finally, a peace agreement is reached after years of negotiation in Paris. Paris peace agreement. Kissinger, the key man on the American side, Le Duc To, the key man on the Vietnamese side. Um, they managed to secure the arrangement for American POWs to come home. Most of those guys were shot down uh, American pilots and some have been living in bamboo cages for uh, six, seven, even eight years um, of the war and treated horrifically. But they're finally um, on their way home and the Americans agreed to pull out all their troops which they don't tell uh, President Chu of the South Vietnamese about when they reached that agreement. He is not particularly happy with that. And in April, the last US troops left the shores of Vietnam for America and they left the war to the South Vietnamese to carry on. It was very much a civil war between the North and the South um, and the Americans would still be involved. They still provided equipment, they still provided advisors, they still had troops at the embassy obviously protecting American soil, but the combat troops have now left and uh, it's gonna take two more years. Again, bloody fighting, but the South Vietnamese are, are massively outmatched. In uh, 1975, sorry, that's marked when the last combat troops leave, and this is April when Saigon fell to the communist tanks in the streets. It was a humiliating end for the Americans as they scrambled to the embassy route to be evacuated by the chopper, and you had scores of people being punched in the face trying to get on the choppers and overloading the choppers, and some choppers crashing because of it as they desperately tried to uh, get out of Vietnam. Um, did they lose the war? Well, 
it's hard to argue they didn't, although there weren't American combat troops in there when Saigon actually fell. You need to be able to make a judgment about the success of containment on the surface of it very much like it was a failure. You can't really argue against that in Vietnam, but you could argue um, that they do have success in Korea and Cuba as well. And you could also argue, perhaps, well, maybe Saigon would have fallen a lot, lot sooner um, to the communists if the Americans hadn't gone in there and tried to prop up those regimes. And you also need to be aware of the aftermath of the Vietnam War. Some horrific figures uh, to give you for the Americans. 58,000 or over 58,000 American military dead. All their names are inscribed on uh, the wall in Washington. Um, if you ever get a chance to go and see it, definitely go and see it. That small fry though in comparison to the North Vietnamese, this isn't including South Vietnamese, who paid a far higher price to win the war, where if you count civilians and military deaths, the estimate, the best estimate you're going to get is over 3 million people died in order to try and win their independence, finally. Um, and that is the wrapped up end of paper one. Make sure you know your stuff, make sure you do yourselves justice. Best of luck, everybody.